and welcome to Adventures in Small Business. This program is a collaborative effort by the U.S. Small Business Administration Hawaii District Office, the Small Business Development Center, the Ming Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veteran Business Center of the Pacific to showcase the local entrepreneurs, the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses. I am Laura Hiramatsu from the Small Business Development Center and your host for today. And we are fortunate to have Carrie Louie, who is the general manager for Aloha Edibles. Welcome, Carrie, and thank you Hi, for Laurie. being here. Thanks for asking us. For me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, we've, we've been working together from the time you started, and I would mm -hmm. like you to share your experience in starting up the business. And if you could also, what went well and some of the unexpected challenges that you faced as you started up the business? Well, I think um, what happened was um, it was fate because we ran a small restaurant and uh, we made some beef jerky chips for our customers to try and that went over well and, and we decided, well, we should close the restaurant and do a beef jerky business. So lo and behold, we took the leap of faith with our eyes closed because shortly after that, we found out you had to be USDA inspected to um, produce beef jerky and to resell it, which is what our plan was. And so we started the journey of, of learning all about USDA and all the uh, complicated hoops and things you have to uh, jump through. And um, we had a, uh, we had a customer actually who told us, hey, um, if you guys want to do this, you know, I have a warehouse out in YPO and we can build it out. So we did it. Um, it took us over two years, two, to, two years to get everything where it needed to be so that we could get inspected um, by USDA and have them give us our grant of inspection. So we started from a bare shell of a building. And we learned all about plumbing. We learned about FRP on walls. Um, our facility, you can shoot it down from the ceilings to the floors to clean it. Uh, we learned a lot of things. And um, we also learned that moving your operation from a small thing mm -hmm. to something large is, is um, you know, there's a lot of of things that go wrong because when you're increasing your production you then have to um, along comes all these these things that happen like maybe the jerky does not respond well in a bigger uh, cooking yes dehydration unit and what we had to do to do it and then we had to figure out oh we need to take HACCP classes so then we reached out to the UH system we reached out to uh, people on the mainland, Claire Bundock, we hired a consultant and we knew this was all going to cost money. So then we reached out to Laurie Yu at Small <laughs> Business Development. Um, you helped us write our business plan. You guided us through a lot of things that we knew nothing about. Um, so finally, it came to the point where, okay, all our ducks are lined up. Now let's go ahead and build. And even that was an adventure, right? Because the people building yes. had their own opinions on what your plant should be. So they had their ideas. And then let's take it back a bit. What is a HACCP? I mean, it takes a lot of, is it like a plant, Right. A, a, a so we had to learn about um, the Food Safety Modernization Act, which is FISMA, referred to as FISMA. Through that, we also had to learn about HACCP plan, which is a hazard analysis of your critical control points. Uh, we had to learn about GMPs, good manufacturing practices. So our book is filled with all of that. Um, our book is about this thick, about three oh, inches. Wow. And it's just our basic guidelines of what we go through every day. So your inspector comes in, goes through your books, goes through your records, walks through your plant. They do, um, they check in the mornings. Uh, you know, they'll tell you, okay, tomorrow morning we're going to have inspection before you start. So what we have to do is we can't touch anything till they come in. They have their flashlights. They shine it at all different angles. They climb into our dehydrators. They make sure that the, the you know, the, the fan blowing has no dust on it. Or they, they go through everything with a white glove. 
And no, this is like not for the faint at heart, and you need a lot of capital because it took two years for you to do it. So you really couldn't produce or scale up your main mm -hmm. product until you had your USDA right. certified facility. Right. We could do retail sales, so that's you know just one on one, and really, if you're building out that type of facility, it's not enough to cover the expenses. On top of that, you have your monthly expenses. We needed to hire an exterminator to come in monthly. And so, you know, I was explaining to someone just yesterday, they still have the exterminator comes, they check if you have bugs and all this. Yes, but along with that, you have to get someone who knows about food safety mm -hmm. because if they spray any kind of chemical that isn't, everything that's in that room or in the facility has to be thrown away. Because it's contaminated, cross contaminated, contaminated, correct. Oh, that is. So we hired um, Orkin. And you know, Hawaii, it's all about business relationships. So we hired um, Orkin because of our relationship with Lan Okamoto. Just the best. We explained to him what we were doing. We explained to him the USDA side needs all of this. Um, our FDA side needed certain things. And um, so we've got that all in place. My Orkin book that USDA comes and inspects is another three inch binder. It's another binder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have all your safety data sheets and all of that there. And even that, you know, that's quite an expensive thing that you oh, have every amazing. month. Oh, what yeah. a journey. Um, just to share with you the products. This is, I'm gonna show the audience. This is the, one of their main products. It's a beef chip. Thin as a chip and delicious. It's like beef turkey chip. Right. Right. So it's really good for people who are trying to cut down on their oils, you know, so they, they want the crunch of a potato chip, mm. but they don't want to eat the starch and they don't want to eat, have the oil. So our beef chip, um, we have three different flavors right now. Pepper, which of course is self-explanatory. Uh, traditional, which a lot of people on the keto diet like because it's only salt, pepper, and garlic. And your original, which is the teriyaki. Oh, this must be popular. The most po popular. The most popular, popular is the teriyaki, right. Okay. And then after you did your beef jerky, I noticed you have other. So I guess there was um, some pivotal moment in your business that made you expand? Right. Okay. So we decided that, you know, there's... We couldn't rest all our, our laurels on just one product. Right. And the company owner mm -hmm. and our core group of people were all kind of crazy. So we, <laughs> and we're all foodies. So we all have our favorites and we discuss things. And so um, the next product we came up with was our Furikake potato chips. Oh, these? Yeah. Mm. And you know, everybody in Hawaii, right? Furikake is a big thing. So we have that, does really well. Then we said, okay, we, we gotta do something else. Yes. And we always, for some reason, we don't stick in the same category. So we ended up doing this, an instant creme brulee Ooh, mix. I tried this. And talk about really instant. Easy. You mix the packet with four cups of heavy whipping cream, bring it to a boil for one minute and refrigerate, and you get restaurant quality creme brulee. So we have it in the original, which is a vanilla, and Kona coffee. And we're really lucky because the owner's uncle is Stanton Ho. And Stanton Ho is touted yes. to be um, the pastry chef of the millennium. He took the pastry team for the US to Lyon, France. And nice. that was the first team to ever get gold from the US. Wow, nice. I so unfortunately, he passed away um, recently, but you know, he left us this gift, and so we have this creme brulee mix that does quite well. Then, brainstorming again, we decided to start making doggy treats. Oh my gosh. And that's, it? Um, that's it right there, 100% beef. If you're on a low salt diet, that's beef. wonderful, I eat that. Human consumption? Human consumption. Is okay. Yep. Same type of beef we use for the beef jerky. Your dog may not be too happy though. <laughs> well, but um, nice. my dog loves, loves it. it. I mean, nice. and, and it's, you know, everybody's going to the healthier uh, treats for their animals. 
very, very healthy. So then a couple weeks ago, we, um, oh, not, then the next product we looked at, totally different again, called Java Lava, and it's 100% Kona coffee tablets. You drop the tablet into boiling water or hot water, stir it, and then you get Kona coffee in a cup. But the unique thing about this tablet is we've made it into different shapes. So one is a shell shape, one is a hibiscus. We're working on other shapes, and we're getting ready to launch this product in a couple weeks. Oh, nice. This is going to be, where can they find this? Hopefully, you'll be able to find it at stores like Dye or not Dye anymore, Don Quixote. Um, you'll be able to find it at uh, perhaps Safeway. You know, Wholesale Unlimited, that's where we sell our other items. And so um, because we've got that product almost ready to launch, we were sitting down again and we came up with another new product. Our Furikake chips did so well, we decided to make it into a cookie. Yeah, so, the cookie here it has a foot. <laughs> so it's a Furikake potato chip uh, cookie with chocolate chips in it. Oh, nice. And it's a very unique flavor. And my, one of my girlfriends says, I don't even like cookies, but I can't stop eating these. So, quite addictive. Oh, so, that's an, so in the last few years, you went from your main product, which is the beef jerky, mm -hmm. expanded to chips, your creme brulee, your dog treats, your car. So, new adventures. So, what advice do you have for small businesses you know, on surviving in, in Hawaii and making things work? You have to... Love your product, but not be in love with your product. You have to be willing to be like bamboo. You have to be strong, but you also have to bend. You know, you have to rely on your resources. I mean, yeah. I have many people that um, are my mentors. Laurie's our mentor for, you know, business <laughs> advice. You. Um, we use resources like uh, Aurora Salo and Lauren Tamamoto from the yeah. UH Systems. Um, I use Claver Bundak from the mainland, who's an, you know, a great resource. We um, oftentimes call our consultant Kenny Olds. We we have a number of people who can can lend a lot of light on many facets. So you sort of like build your team, make sure that you're always connecting with them, and then making sure that you network or make the connections. There's a lot of resources out there that like oh, you yes. had shared. So. Small businesses are really highly recommended to reach out and then seek help when they need it, not too late. I like your saying about um, love your product, but don't be in love with it. Can you expand on that and what brought you to that um, saying? Sure. For instance, um, you know, I, I really like a lot of different types of food, but other people may not. Mm. Right, so when we first came out with, um, for instance, the beef jerky, mm -hmm. we had so many people telling us, oh, you know, um, I really want it a little bit thinner. Or on the other hand, I really want it thicker. I want it to be more traditional. I want this or that. And so we had to experiment. We do a lot of taste testing. We take it to um, like events like Made in Hawaii, and we'll get customer feedback on it. And some of it may hurt. You know, they may say, well, I don't really like this flavor at all because I don't really care for ginger or I don't really care for teriyaki. Mm. But don't take it personally. Yes. You have to take it as, good as really good advice and someone critiquing. Listen to your customers. Right? Yes. We're going to take a short break here. And we'll be right back. Aloha! I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahei every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha! Aloha! I'm Tim Apicella. I'm here with Cynthia Sinclair. And this is Trump Week. It's going to appear every Friday at 11 a.m. Between Jay Fidel, Cynthia, and myself, we talk about Trump, the activities, and the news stories for that week as it pertains to the Trump administration. 
We hope you tune in and watch the fun. Aloha. See you then. Hi, welcome back to Adventures in Small Business. We have with us Carrie Louie from Aloha Edibles. Um, Carrie, any words of advice? I know you were looking to export your products. Um, can you tell us the adventures in exporting? Oh, yes. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to um, link up or partner up with people who really know where you, you know, the, the pitfalls of where you want to export to. So for instance, um, we definitely wanted to export to Japan. You know, that was like our number one goal, right? right? And then we found out Japan doesn't take beef products, mm. you know? So then we had to say, okay, well, we really want our creme brulee there. Okay. And then we found out there's huge import taxes on sugar-based products. Oh, and your product is high in sugar content, right? I mean, it has one of the main ingredients. Right. right? So, you know, you learn all of this, and then... We did research through, um, through Laurie's office again, and we found out where the hugest consumption of beef products are. And so we're, we're definitely looking to explore Canada next. Um, you know, we just, you just have to learn what the, uh, the countries will allow and what they won't allow. And then you have to link up with someone who knows that market. So, you know, we, we were in touch with someone who wholesales a lot to Japan, and um, they really help us a lot. Do that. So you still yeah. export? To Japan, yeah. yes. That's we good. do our creme brulee oh. product. Um, we found out that people in Japan have very small refrigerators. Yes. So <laughs> Very small kitchens. Everything is very compact yeah. in that market. Yeah, so then um, our creme brulee makes, you know, <laughs> makes quite a bit of dessert, so they have to make it when they are having a party. Ah, okay. So it's a good experience for small businesses in terms of doing your homework, making sure they understand mm -hmm. all the, the customs, the tariffs, the shipping challenges, mm -hmm. and so forth before they... So it takes a lot of capital and to get there. Mm -hmm. It does. And then, you know, rely on SBA because they have classes... Um, Right, and the high step At, program, right, which is put on by the um, seabed. Right. right, they have classes that teach you about, you know, exporting. Yes, yes, and um, that's a good way to start. Good to know. Any other advice that you have for small business as you know transitioning? Like, what was the difficult part when, you know, you realized that some of your products that you just love were not as loved by others? So, what did you do? What? How did you fall into all of this? You know make the transition you did you look for people or did they come to you or how do you how did that morph well like i said you you can't be in love you know you can love your product but you can't really be in love with it so um we've been experimenting with our meat you know and uh, we did a lot of taste testing you have to have a thick skin if there's a critique it's not against you, it's not against your product, but it's really to make you stronger. So we've, we've done that, you know, we've, um, we've tweaked our recipes, we're looking into offering other flavors that people like. Um, a new one coming out is like a, it's a salt and vinegar, because that's, that's so popular. popular. Yes. Right. So that, that, um, salt and vinegar beef jerky? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. And, uh, you know, there's many pitfalls too, yes. right? So USDA would not allow us to do our sriracha flavor for a while because um, it would stain, you know, our cooking mats and things. And so we have recently, in fact, last week, uh, we found a way where it didn't stain. And so we're going to be bringing that back. Yeah. So you have to really... One of the things is you have to really have a passion because no matter what stomping blocks you come across, mm -hmm. you, that's going to get you over the hurdle. Correct. Is that true? And then you just keep, keep going. So what keeps you going whenever you have, because you have had some surmountable up, you know, blocks right. and boundaries and everything that came at you. How did you keep going? What makes you keep going? Oh, I'm just one of those that if there's a challenge... I'm up for it, and it's fun. And so, 
you know, all the workers know if there's something, something. that we have to overcome, yeah, don't. Tara's going to dig don't in be and surprised. we're going to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm the one who takes apart the band sealers to check out how they work. You know, I'm, I'm the one who took apart our new coffee machine to figure out exactly what's going on. And, you know, I called in mechanical engineers and I, all of these things. And it's just, I got to make it work. I, I have to find that solution. If I don't, I don't sleep. Oh, they're lucky to have you. Uh, as part of the team to be able to drive all of that. In the, um, this tight labor market, is there anything that you, you recommend in terms of maintaining, keeping your staff? Because you know, a lot of people are looking for good employees. What are the challenges and how have you maintained or kept your employees? Yeah, that's, that's an ongoing problem, right? But we've been lucky. You know, we have some key people that um, I trust 110%. You know that they're going to show up. You know that they're going to give you 100%. Um, they care about the product. So they want a quality product, too. And, and it is hard to find, but somehow if you're, you have that faith that you're yeah. going to find someone good, yeah, it happens. Okay, so to keep them, what do you supposed to do differently, you think? To keep all, because everybody's looking for a good worker. So how do you, what do you do to, you know, well, we, we try to, um, small things, you know, like when, when we stumble upon something, um, say for instance, we stumble upon someone who makes a really good pistachio bread or something. Yeah. We bring it in, we have everyone come in and, you know, we all sit down and we just talk. Nice. Um, instead of having formal meetings, mm -hmm. we do that more, you know. So live it informal, bring something in, talk brainstorm, right. talk about issues, talk about, you know, future opportunities, and it makes it for a little bit more comfortable dialogue. Is mm -hmm. that what it does instead of a really formal setting with right. an agenda? Because we're a small company, oh. so we can do that. Yeah. I don't know if it would work in a large company, but it works for Facebook. us. Yeah. It's nice. Okay, so what's your adventure next? Um, you know, when you started out, you folks had to do a business plan. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. So you did a business plan. Is that how, something you highly recommend to you know s small businesses to start? You know, sometimes they feel, well, you know, I don't have much time, you know, and it takes a little time to do it. But how do you feel having to create the foundations when you, when you start? I think it helped us because it it set the direction that we needed to go in. We didn't, and then we tried to stay with it. But then as time goes on, you do expand. And so, of course, you know, you, you have to update it. But it's, it's like setting down your goals. So without your goals, you know, who it's like It's like a road map for your company. Yes, it is. It tells you, and it is always changing. Like, you, you change completely. From when you're looking at your business plan now, it's so different from what it you is. are now today, right? Correct. So sort of like up, updating it, keep it going. Mm -hmm. Where's the next adventure for you? You know, do you have an idea well, what you want to do? We've decided um, dog treats is something that, you know, is very, very popular now. So we're actually working on a Marlin jerky dog treat. Nice. Marlin jerky treats. Okay. Look forward yeah. to that. I know that that's a good one because we've done some test batches. And my dog personally whimpers and cries when she sees it, and, and she just can't wait to get it, you know? So that's, that's one opinion that I believe. <laughs> okay, that's great. I, I think that's interesting. And then I think you mentioned real quickly before we have to wrap up here is um, co-packing. Are you also yes. going to be considering that? And what kind of a businesses or food are you looking to assist? So we are looking at co-packing, and, and um, we've got two beef jerky other beef jerky companies that don't want to invest the money into a larger facility but do want to expand their product line and so we will be co-packing for a couple of oh, other companies nice. so besides beef jerky somebody's asking want to know okay, can you make my cookies or can you make are you willing to open up and discuss it with anybody who are looking for someone mm -hmm. to help them co-pack and then get their product you know to scale up Okay, very good. We'll nice. entertain anything. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then that'll be your next adventure, yeah. right, as you, as you expand. So 
This is very interesting, and it's, you know, it's, um, it's been a pleasure, you know, going the journey with, you know, with Aloha Edibles and you, and as you work towards, you know, um, growing the company, you know, moving forward. Um, your facilities there, um, any, any words to anybody else who, you know, wants to consider, are you open to people looking at your facility to a certain degree? Or? Mm -hmm. They can give us a call. Um, we, we do mini tours if, if someone wants to see it. Um, you know, we're, we're proud of our facilities, so. Are you the only USDA? We're not the only ones on Oahu anymore. Okay. Uh, there's one other. Um, but I do know this. We're very, very proud that when USDA walks through mm -hmm. and they tell us this is the cleanest facility they've seen so far, okay. you know, okay. in the state. And, yes. and it's because we're new too, right? Yeah. You know, but it feels really good when they say, wow, no problems here. We're going to be wrapping up, but any other other words you'd like to share with us as far as the business or to impart on small business owners as they start to develop their team? Like, you know, what are the team members that you folks look for as you move forward in, in the company? I think the first thing you have to do is is find people who you can have as mentors, like you. The you know, resources out there. The resources. And if you could share with us your phone number, your contact, your website information. Um. So our website is www.alohaedibles.com. And um, our phone number at work is 808-732-2292. And we're out in YPO. So if you'd like, drop by. Um, our hours are governed by USDA. So we're there Saturday, uh, Tuesday through Saturdays from 6 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. So they can buy all these products at your factory? Yes. Okay. And then other than that, they're located at Don Quixote and then all of these? Are Safeway. Safeway. Not the whole line. You know, stores pick and choose. So we're at Wholesale Unlimited. Um, we're at some farmer's markets, uh, especially Windward Mall and 4th Street Mall on Fridays. We're at Don Quixote, Safeway. Uh, Matsumoto Shea Bice. Oh, you're all over the you place. Know. Nice. So. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, but they can go to your website and that would tell them where your products are located and how to mm -hmm. get them. Or they can, they can shop call online? Us. Yes, they can shop online on our website. Okay. Good to know. Um, well, thank you for being here. Um, I know that this has been a very, very exciting journey. Um, Carrie has much expertise. She has uh, whatever she puts her heart in. She has done more than 100%, 110%. And, you know, there's other resources out there as well for anybody who needs assistance besides us, the Hawaii SBDC. But uh, we really um, enjoyed working with her. And we'll continue to work with her going forward. Um, I guess for other businesses out there um, besides exports, um, what other things can you share with us as far as um, running a business, um, like your, your back of the house, we were talking about like um, your accounting, your bookkeeping, you know, how critical is that to the business? That Very critical. Hire a good accountant. <laughs> from the beginning, right? You know, yeah. It's good to have a good accounting system very from the, the very beginning before you start because once you ramp up, how is that? You know, you had a system. Mm -hmm. is, we, we hired someone who's very good, and so he keeps us on point. And we'll get, you know, little text messages from him, love letters, right? Remember to give me this figure. Remember That's to nice. give me that figure. You have this many more days to file this, <laughs> you know? Because sometimes, especially December, yes. you lose track of time. Yeah, and as you get busy with operations, everything, especially if your orders start to, you know, increase, um, your accounting system is something that you really want to have in place at that time but uh, we're going to be um, we're going to be you know wrapping it up and we appreciate you being here thank you so much thank and you and thank you to the audience as well for joining us for adventures in small business thank you